And finally, in South America, Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva has urged his Venezuelan counterpart, Nicolas Maduro, to respect the results of the upcoming elections, saying he was scared of Maduro's warnings of a bloodbath if he lost the vote. I got frightened with Maduro's statement saying there will be a bloodbath if he loses. Whoever loses the election takes a vote path, not a bloodbath. Maduro needs to learn that when you win, you stay. When you lose, you leave. You leave and you get ready for another election. I'm hoping that's what happens. Venezuela will vote to elect their next president on Sunday, July 28th. And after 11 years in power, Maduro is trailing in opinion polls to his 74-year-old opponent and retired diplomat Edmundo Gonzalez. The 61-year-old authoritarian leader and his allies have stepped up the predictions of post-election violence. In fact, in recent weeks, he's warned Venezuelans saying they must choose between war and peace. Maduro added, quote, if you don't want Venezuela to fall into a bloodbath, into fratricidal civil war due to the fascists, let's ensure the greatest success, the greatest victory in the electoral history of our people, end quote. Now, Lula says Maduro has to respect the democratic process and that Brazil will send two members of its electoral justice service to Venezuela to observe the election. I've already spoken to Maduro twice by telephone and Maduro knows that the only chance of Venezuela returning to normality is to have an election process that is respected by everyone. That's why Brazil is sending two people from the electoral justice system. Ambassador Kelso Amorim to Venezuela. Maduro was narrowly elected in 2013 after the death of his predecessor and mentor Hugo Chavez. In 2018, the Venezuelan president won re-election that his adversaries deemed was not free and fair. Maduro's re-election was widely considered a sham, even by the United States, as major opposition parties and their candidates were banned from contesting the polls. The alleged tactics to disrupt the election continue in Venezuela as dozens of people linked to the Gonzalez campaign have been arrested already this year. This includes the head of security for the opposition leader who was just detained for 48 hours just last week. Still, Gonzalez says he will respect the verdict of Venezuelans and trust the election results. I do not want to place myself in crazy scenarios here we are going to have an electoral process, there will be some results. We trust that the results will be respected and that from that moment the process of reconstruction and reinstitutionalization of the country will begin. To the international community, we ask you to accompany us closely in this process because it will be decisive in reducing migration and making Venezuela a reliable partner. Now, it is up to the voters of Venezuela whether they want to re-elect Nicolas Maduro for the third time or make a change amid his deadly and violent threats. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We are counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree. A News 18 Network initiative.
across to the West Indies more than you expect. Hello and welcome to First Coast America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C.